Some homeowners are upset by the Firefly Trail extension, while others support it. We built the first sections of the Greenway Trail. We had some of the very same concerns. Now they're some of our biggest supporters because they realize not only has their property values increased, but their own personal use of the trail uh, has grown. Free legal advice will be available to the public this Saturday at the First Fall Pop-Up Clinic. A local hero, undercover, in our community, spreads cheer and emotional support to families. Hey, look, kids! Here's Ghost Spider-Man! This is Northeast Georgia's only local... Good evening, and I'm Marissa Hernandez. And I'm Katie Anderson with sports, and I'll tell you how the UGA offensive line gained recognition. And I'm Paige Watkins with weather. weather. Later, I'll be telling you what to expect this weekend. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation is looking into the death of a Georgia Southern University football player. Student Jordan Wiggins was found unresponsive in his dorm at approximately 6 p.m. on Monday, October 21st, according to the preliminary information. Wiggins was transported to East Georgia Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. Autopsy results are currently pending. The GBI is working in collaboration with the Georgia Southern Police Department to conduct the investigation. Are you or someone else you know in need of legal advice? The Superior Court of Judges of the Western Circuit are hosting free legal consultations Saturday. Grady News Source reporter Jada Bowman has more on the story. The idea is can we have kind of a one-stop shop on a regular basis where individuals can come and get some advice and some information that might guide them in areas that they're having difficulty with in their life that involve the court system. The Western Circuit Access to Justice Initiative has hosted monthly pop-up clinics since 2017. Judge Ryan Hope, municipal court judge in Athens, Clark County says that over 80 people attended the clinic last month. Uh, it's not a, a secret that there's a high poverty rate in Athens, though, so I, I definitely think it's, it's something that's especially needed in our community, but I, I think it's needed throughout the state. Chief Judge of the Western Judicial Circuit, Patrick Haggard, said the clinics can be advantageous for the courts as well. It, it certainly benefits, I believe, the individuals looking for the help, but it also benefits the courts, too. As far as keeping, when people come to court, they're better prepared, uh, assuming they don't have a lawyer. According to George Haggard, the pop-up clinics serve more than just athens Clark County. People from surrounding counties will also be in attendance. There will be attorneys from various fields volunteering to address different civil cases. Immigration attorneys there, uh, landlord tenant, uh, disability law. We try to have attorneys in different fields. As we screen the individual, ask them, well, what do you need help with? We want to make sure we get that individual with the attorney that's best available to help them with their problem. The pop-up clinic will be held this upcoming Saturday at East Athens Community Center from 9 to 11 a.m. If you are planning to attend, please bring any relevant paperwork. Colbert residents are voicing safety concerns regarding the addition of a Georgia renewable power plant and whether or not they could be affected by these plant emissions. Grady News Source reporter Wesley Kiesel has more on the story. A recent addition to the neighborhood is concerning Colbert residents. A Georgia renewable power biomass plant constructed in 2018 has been making waves in the community. The plant is bringing in jobs to the county as well as commercial tax dollars. But those neighboring the plant are worried that the plant will introduce health risks. Mac Adams, a resident of Colbert that lives a half mile away from the plant with his wife, voices his concerns. We both have had uh, conditions where we <clears throat> had a little bit of difficulty breathing, uh, eyes burning a little bit and everything. Adam's wife Cheryl says she has been monitoring the plant and the pollution she thinks it produces. Mrs. Adams provided this image of soot-covered socks after walking in the grass of their front yard earlier this year. It's just been a bunch of factors that have caused us to be really concerned with this because we've really not gotten the information from our uh, officials like we feel like we should have. Some of the fuel being burned for energy is wood from railroad tracks. It has been treated with creosote, a mixture of chemicals that could be harmful to your health dependent on the amount of exposure. An amendment to the plant permit for operations by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources allows the use of creosote treated wood as fuel. 
Frank Ginn, executive director of Madison County Industrial Development and Building Authority, discusses the emissions regulations the plant adheres to. The plant is designed to, to burn this fuel, and, and in burning that fuel, so the, uh, they have emissions equipment that's there to clean up the emissions that are coming out of the plant so that they mark, work within all the permit limits from an EPA and EPD. Deborah Monin, a professor in UGA's Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, weighs in on how biomass plants can positively benefit the environment. It should have a positive mitigating effect on our CO2 release and therefore positive, a positive overall effect. Monin stated that potential issues could arise if there are materials used for fuel other than clean plant waste. Wellesley Kiesel, Grady News Source. Another expansion of the Firefly Walking Trail is in the works. Grady News Source reporter Bailey Walker has more on the upcoming project. That's right, Marissa. Firefly Trail is one of 19 projects getting funding from athens Clark County's special t Sploss tax. And Phase 3 is just getting started. Firefly Trail is a walking and bicycling path intended to stretch from Athens to Union Point along the Old Georgia Railway. The first portion of the trail off East Broad Street in Athens opened in 2017, and athens Clark County is preparing for Phase 3 that will lengthen the path to Winterville. For people that live near Firefly Trail, it can be a convenient place to walk a dog or get in some exercise, but it's left some homeowners along the proposed trail concerned about their property, including Jerry Mitchell. And we purchased our, pro our property for the privacy that it gave us, and with this trail running right behind our house, through my garden, we no longer have that privacy. Paul Bunce lives on the same street in Winterville and says he's even willing to deed some land on the other side of his property to the Firefly Project to veer off the railroad slightly. He's concerned about the possibility of the county using eminent domain to seize portions of his property. I'm not opposed to the Firefly Trail, but there need to be some accommodations in some areas that I haven't seen happening yet. Kent Kilpatrick, the Director of Leisure Services in athens Clark County, says he understands where homeowners are coming from. We built the first sections of the Greenway Trail. We had some of the very same concerns. Now they're some of our biggest supporters because they realize not only has their property values increased, but their own personal use of the trail uh, has grown. The project is still in concept phase, so nothing is certain yet. Moving forward, they will create a user group of interested citizens and employees to discuss the plans. What we will do then is begin hashing through those comments, begin working with our consultant on some initial design concepts on where the trail could go, and what are some alternatives for rerouting that trail if we were to do that. Once the plans are a little bit more concrete, they'll report to the mayor and commissioners who will make the final decision. Project manager Derek Doster anticipates this project to be done in the next two to three years. And if you'll take a look at this map on athens Clark County's website, you can see the exact route this new portion of the trail will follow. It'll start from the existing trail just outside downtown Athens and stretch all the way down Spring Valley Road and into Winterville along Main Street. And if we zoom all the way out, you'll see Union Point down here in Greene County. That's actually where the trail is set to end. It'll span 39 miles when everything is fully completed in Athens and surrounding counties. If you have questions or comments about the new trail, the county is holding a second public information meeting on Thursday at 7 p.m. at the athens Clark County Streets and Drainage Building where you can speak to public officials. Back to you, Marissa. Thanks, Bailey. Coming up next, Peyton Lewis has more on how Commerce School students are receiving free thermometers to help fight this flu season. I'm Peter, and there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything! That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? A 
Attention travelers. Next Tuesday, a major power outage will cause complete chaos throughout the city. Food, water, and phone service will be in short supply. There will likely be panic citywide. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. The disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Former President Jimmy Carter suffered a fall on Monday evening. This is Carter's third fall in the last several months. The incident resulted in a minor pelvic fracture, according to the release from the Carter Center. The 95-year-old former president is in good spirits and looking forward to recovering at his home in Plains, Georgia. The Commerce City School District has already seen cases of the flu in their schools this year. Grady News Source reporter Peyton Lewis found out more about the unique, unique way these schools are combating illness this flu season. Day one, we began seeing flu symptoms and strep symptoms. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it was the following week that I had confirmed flu and strep cases. Flu season came early this year for students in Commerce City Schools, but nurses Jamie Peters and Sandy Davis have a solution. Commerce City Schools have found a unique way to keep their kids healthy this year with the help of these thermometers. Nurse Jamie Peters, who serves Commerce Middle and Elementary Schools, is excited for the promise of these new devices. What's really cool about them is, aside from the fact that they're free for anybody who wants one, is that they are smart thermometers. So there's an app that you can download to your phone and the thermometer actually links to the app. The app Ms. Peters is referring to is called Kinza and is available to anyone with a smartphone. Once the app is downloaded, simply type in your information, then hit the plus sign in the bottom right hand corner. After you've done that, press the button on the top of your thermometer to link it up with the app. Once the thermometer is connected, you can begin recording your temperature. The app will send the collected data to your school to report trends. Nurse Sandy Davis says she is looking forward to seeing the impact. I'm very interested in seeing the data that's collected and see how well this goes and see if we do see a decrease in the number of kids being sent to school sick or the illnesses that we see in our schools. The nurses encourage families choosing not to participate in the thermometer program to maintain good hygiene habits and avoid others who show signs of the flu. Peyton Lewis, Grady News Source. Thank you, Peyton. If you or anyone you know would like to join the Commerce City School Thermometer Program, text the word FLUENCY to 555-888. I'm Katie Anderson, and coming up in sports, Georgia's offensive line received a mid-season honor. Looking forward to World Series Game 2 and multiple UJ athletes named SEC Player of the Week. Stay tuned. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward-facing or rear-facing? Did they move to a booster seat too soon? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know. I'm a single mother and I was the main one working, so I never thought that I could go back to school, you know? <laughs> my sister, my mother, everybody wanted to help me with my kids. I could not have gone my diploma without my family. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. I'm 
I'm Katie Anderson, and we are well into the football season here in Athens. The University of Georgia's offensive line was one of 24 teams listed on the Joe Moore Award Midseason Honor Roll. The Joe Moore Award, named for legendary offensive line coach Joe Moore, is the largest trophy in college football, standing at six feet tall and weighing 800 pounds. Georgia's offense has acquired 471.3 yards per game, ranking them third in the SEC and in the top 20 nationally. Among the honored offensive players is Andrew Thomas, junior offensive tackle, who allows 0.57 sacks per game, ranking him third nationally and leading the SEC. The Bulldogs ranked second in the SEC for rushing yards, averaging 237.1 yards per game. Junior running back and SEC Offensive Player of the Week, DeAndre Swift, has also made strides with 760 rushing yards and seven touchdowns. The semifinalists for the Joe Moore Award will be announced November 19th and the finalists December 10th. The winner selection will be made public after a surprise visit to the winning team's campus in late December. The Bulldogs are currently on a bye week and Coach Kirby Smart smoke, spoke last night on what the team is doing to prepare for the November 2nd game against the Florida Gators. Coach Smart said in a press release, quote, it was a good tempo today, good enthusiasm. They looked a little fresher because they had Sunday and Monday off, so I thought it was a good tempo. The guys got their legs back. We worked on a lot of fundamentals, blocking, tackling, and a couple phases of special teams. A couple opponents we're going to play in the future do some things that are just different and try to expose our guys to it. I thought the guys had a really good attitude and good juice." End quote. The Washington Nationals took the first win over the Houston Astros 5-4 in Game 1 of the World Series last night. The Nationals now hold a 1-0 lead in the best of seven series heading into Game 2 tonight in Houston. The Nationals' win is majorly due to 20-year-old Justin Soto, who drove in three of the Nationals' five runs. Ryan Zimmerman also contributed with a solo home run to start off the Nationals' scoring. Tonight's pitching matchup is Houston's Justin Verlander versus Washington's Steven Strasburg. The Nationals will look to extend their lead to 2-0, and the Astros will hope to tie it up at 8 p.m. before the series moves to D.C. UGA women's soccer midfielder Abby Bowen has been named SEC's Offensive Player of the Week. Bowen scored a goal in overtime versus Mississippi State, securing the victory for Georgia. This was UGA soccer's first SEC overtime win since 2011. UGA is currently seventh in the conference with three games left to play and are hoping to earn a spot in the SEC tournament. The Bulldogs have a home game this Thursday, October 24th against Kentucky before traveling to Arkansas to face off against the Razorbacks on Sunday. They will finish out the regular season on October 31st against the Florida Gators. The top 10 teams with the most conference wins will participate in SEC tournament in November. That's it for your sports update. For Grady News Source, I'm Katie Anderson. I'm Paige Watkins with your Northeast Georgia weather, and coming up, we'll take a look at the temperatures and what you can expect this weekend. Hello. Hi. I'm from Blue Hood Stone Barns. We brought a meal for you, and I'm here to serve it to you. Okay, great. Come in. Zucchini carbonara, made from zucchini that was harvested earlier this morning. Again? Oh. <laughs> hey, Dan Barber. You have room for a little bit more? <laughs> come yeah, on come in. Come on in. Brochettes, the sausage. So when we made that zucchini carbonara, you know, they're the end pieces of the zucchini, and they're the cores that we cut away. Not to mention zucchini flour. Usually those get thrown out. We use them to create an entire second dish. Does that, oh. Again? Uh. I'm here to bring you your third course. It's the vines from your zucchini. We'll have a little zucchini stem pasta. A different experience of zucchini. When we start to think differently about our food, we can get a lot more out of it. This is delicious. What do you think we can make out of this? 40% of food in America is never eaten. Cook it, store it, share it. Visit savethefood.com. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing too hard at one of your colleagues' jokes at the office party? She's not even funny. Warning sign, those drinks are probably going to your head. Probably okay isn't okay when it comes to drinking and driving. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five.
weather. I'm Paige Watkins bringing you your Grady News Source weather. We're going to take a look at the evening forecast as well as rain possibilities and wrap it up with your five day forecast. So we're going to see a beautiful day today. We had a high of 71 degrees, sunny, and there's zero chance of precipitation. Now going into tonight, we'll see the temperatures begin to decrease, but we are going to see clear skies in the low and the mid 40s. Now looking at your five-day forecast, we're going to see tomorrow's weather very similar as today with 71 degrees as their high, and we will see the coldest temperature tonight with being a low of 45. Going into the weekend, we will see rain, so bring out your rain jackets and your umbrellas because there is a 30 and 40 percent chance of showers this weekend. I'm Paige Watkins, and that's all for your weather update. Coming up, see how the Barrow County Sheriff's Office takes their service to the community a step further, and a local undercover hero spreads cheer and emotional support to families. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing, and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Is your family in need of more quality time together? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Nature is best enjoyed together. So bring the whole family to discover all the bonding and stress reducing benefits parks and forests have to offer. Visit discovertheforest.org and trade in phone time for family time. Birds, squirrels, chipmunks, grass, worms, bugs, trees, rocks, and other objects in nature cannot talk. If you'd like to have a conversation while visiting nature, you will need to bring humans along. We strongly recommend starting with your family. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. When most people think of what a sheriff's office does for the community, promoting safety and protecting their citizens comes to mind. A program at the Barrow County Sheriff's Office takes their service to the community a step further. The Participating in Lives of Area Youth Program, also known as PLAY, is a two-week all-expenses-paid summer program for at-risk youth in the area and it has been part of the Barrow County Sheriff's Office since 2004. This Saturday is the annual Back the Badge Charity Ride and Fall Festival and all net proceeds will benefit the play program. The event will be held at the Barrow County Courthouse and registration will begin at 9 a.m. An Oconee County Deputy Sheriff is making a personal connection with citizens in a new and unique way. Our reporter Skylar Nicholson has the story. Hey, look, kids! Here comes Spider-Man! Suddenly, a child's favorite superhero appears before them, bringing cheer and happiness, a dream come true for some, and instant magic created within that very second. But underneath the costume and mask lies a true, real-life superhero, William Brewer. Brewer is a sheriff's deputy at the Oconee County Sheriff's Office, and in 2015, he had an idea to give back to his community and those in need by bringing happiness in the form of imaginative characters to kids of all ages, visiting local community events, schools, libraries, and even making his way into Atlanta to visit patients at children's health care. So I just wanted to think of something that I could do to try and cheer these kids up, you know, even if it's for five seconds, you know, five minutes, whatever it might be. So I thought, superheroes. Everybody loves superheroes. Those memories were created with the Hadir family, Sebastian, a patient of children's met Iron Man for the first time when he was three. He suffered from leukemia and was in and out of the hospital. Brewer stayed connected with the family over the years and visited multiple times, sent videos from different characters, 
and sent care packages, he established a lasting connection that has not wavered. Little care package, Captain America pillow, the picture I had Captain America autograph it and I mailed it to him, little care package. And uh, several months later, he ended up uh, Several months later, he ended up passing away. And that one really hit me. More than three years later, Mr. Brewer still remains in contact with the mother, and the mother has a lasting memento to hold on to and even sleep with every night. It helps to carry those things over, even though he passed away a couple of years ago and it's been difficult because there's a lot of things that I've held on to that are still his and they're in storage but I can't carry around Iron Man dolls and Batman dolls with me so having having something that connects those memories of the happy times and I'm gonna try not to cry that connects the happy times is um, it helps it helps a lot there's a greater purpose in the actions of the superhero to point out the true superheroes in the world around him Brewer makes a point to make it more about the children and the superpowers that they hold within themselves. So I just kind of flip it around to make it seem like it's all about them where, you know, because it is and how they're, they're more important than any kind of fictional. This story points out the importance of our everyday heroes of community service. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Marissa Hernandez. And I'm Katie Anderson. I'm Paige Watkins. See you next time. Grady News Source is a student production of the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of Georgia, which is solely for its contents. Views expressed do not represent those of the administration nor the Board of Regents at the University System of Georgia. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. I'm ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> why couldn't the pellet wait? Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? This is Jackson who directed today. Um, Today was wonderfully smooth. Everything was in on time. The show was beautiful. So amazing job to you guys. Amazing job, um, Jackson and our volunteers, especially Caroline, who did an amazing job on playback today, um, which we had a lot more of than usual. Um, it was very interesting um, to have B-Block Live today, which I think we thought was going to be a lot more chaotic than it was, but it actually turned out really great. So. Um, yeah, great job to everyone for just being really communicative um, and to Jasmine for making a really smooth show. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a really smooth show too. And I like Rachel said, I guess that all comes down to communication. Great communication with you guys. It was all, awesome. I've asked a lot of questions, but it paid off because I mean, it was, it was really smooth and I appreciate how quick you guys were to respond. And then thank you to the crew back there or if they went home, thank you. Uh, just because it was smooth. I mean, I had great communication with playback, and that calls for some really great punches and smoothness in the show. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, good job. Go, dogs. Uh, beat Florida.
Sunday, you know, didn't go that well. So we promised ourselves that this one we're going to do much better. And I, I'm really proud of our show. We, uh, I think all of you did great packages. Uh, uh, our talent in the beginning and the end, everybody was looking at the right camera, had the right tone, very pleasant, especially the, the goodbye was very animated. I, I really liked the body language and very animated, the three of you. Um, and um, the producer uh, who told me that she didn't, she didn't like producing, I'm, I, I can't wait to see if she changed her mind with this show. Uh, but digital was awesome. We managed to approve several scripts, thanks to um, Ashlyn. But I will not, I will talk a little bit later. I first want to give the floor to our producer, Jasmine. So what do you think after this show? about producing. It wasn't bad today since I kind of like knew what I was doing. Um, everything went very smoothly. Like I feel like today it was chill and then like once the show started I was like nervous because I was like today has been too good. Like I'm so <laughs> <laughs> and then we got in there and everything was running so smoothly and oh my gosh the anchors were amazing. Marissa amazing like every time the camera changed and she just looked I was like yes like it just <laughs> looked oh my gosh the packages were so good like everything was so good I'm just so happy like our timing today was great we got things approved early I think everything was approved before even three o'clock I think about so that was like really good I'm just like so happy because Monday was tragic and today was it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> Monday and, yeah. and Wednesday. Um, I think everyone was just on top of getting everything in to can early so that we can get it approved. And then also going live, I think really worked mm -hmm. from from what I can see. Um, I love I love the live. Like there wasn't like I mean, a the B block. The B -block. We didn't have a live live show. Yeah, I meant but just like live having live the, the B block, B -block. live. Yeah. Um, I think that went pretty well. I, did I look at the right cameras? Yeah. Yes, yes you did. Sure that we were the show was and like flawless. Writing them down was also very helpful, but for the most part, I think doing it live worked well. I mean, I got a little like thirsty, but aside from that, <laughs> everything was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think it, it went well. I feel like also with the B block, and just because I've produced before, um, is you, you have a little bit more choice when you record it live. It's not like, okay, there's things that are pre-recorded. You can play with time a little bit more if, it, if not. So that's the good thing. Yeah. So, so do you like producing now or you don't like producing? Um, today was great <laughs> and it was a great experience. What, but, did, you, what uh, did you learn about producing that you didn't know? Did it surprise you in any way since this is your first time? Um, nothing really surprised me. The reason why I don't like producing I'm a very indecisive. I'm just a very indecisive person all around, and so like people would ask me like, I know Bailey. She was like, so um, do you want me to do this? I'm like, I don't know. What do you want to do? It's up to you. I'm like, oh, it is up to me, isn't it? So I'm just like the most yeah. indecisive person ever. So that's really just why I don't like producing. But um, I think I was a little more decisive today than I was Monday. So I mean, that was good. But no, it's, it's not for me. But you know, that's just me. So what if, do you have any piece of advice to uh, our next team? Um, just Peyton is going to I be mean, if Peyton you is producing, let me see my If you notes. choose to like do the Bebop live and like the teases um, yeah. live, then I mean, I guess you don't have to worry about getting them in early, but if not, just get those in early so they can get approved early so that it doesn't like push Professor B behind on like approving all the scripts. Mm -hmm. I think that was like my biggest takeaway from Monday. Um, today, because it was the B block and like the teasers lab, I kind of got to. I, I mean, I got them in early, but I kind of got to take my time with them. And then she had she had more time to approve them. But I think just getting things into can and timing was like the biggest. The biggest. And thanks away. to all of you. For, for really, I mean, we finished everything early, and yeah. we uh, we had time to even chat. I couldn't believe it. I just felt. Um, you know, bad. It's like, we have to be doing something. Why are we chatting? Uh, but that was good. Um, Ashlyn, 
Tell us how we did digitally. Um, yeah, I really like how everything um, ran today. So, of course, Monday was very sad. We did not have any digital content mm -hmm. at all. And mm -hmm. then Tuesday's class did not have any digital content at all. <laughs> so, this morning, <laughs> Dr. Bright was drought. like, we have digital to have drought. content. <laughs> so, um, the good thing is we have um, Julia's story already up. It was very... Um, in depth, it gave some context mm -hmm. that we haven't seen from other outlets. Um, local outlets have covered the story about Google Books, but they haven't really looked at the big picture about this has been a push statewide for a while now, but this is finally going into effect now. Um, and uh, we also have um, some social media posts, and um, the Grady Daily went really well. We had a little bit of a problem towards the end of it, but that's a good thing that we can fix from now on. Um, what was yeah. the problem? So <laughs> we found that we could twist the background, oh, and it twisted my face but instead. But so my face has background a little, and face. My face okay. looks a little distorted, but it's fine. <laughs> I thought it looked good. Yeah. Okay, thanks. You look um, good anyway. Thanks. thanks. Uh, as Sam said, I look like an Oompa Loompa, but it's fine. It was only for thirty seconds. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was about it. It was good today. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, any advice you want to pass on to the next digital um, One thing that I found that really works is teasing, not teasing the TV, but um, like Alex, y yesterday she did sound bites and stuff on Instagram. Insta videos on Instagram do, do pretty well. Um, another thing that we did with Julia on the app half, um, sort of talking about tips and tricks, just something quick that's about 30 seconds, really does good on social. Um, and plus on Facebook, a lot of people just, you know, with like the Facebook watch, you can like keep on scrolling through those videos if it's, you know, quick one minute, one thirty story. So, yeah. That's great, great. <laughs> Bless you. And I just want to shout out um, Skyler for coming in and saving the day with that hilltop project. It was so good. We were like in the piano, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's very beautiful. And I'm, I'm glad we got to, to run it because we're running out of time for the profiles, so. Taylor, how, was how did we do content-wise? Uh, uh, content-wise today, I thought we did uh, really good. Everyone uh, came with an idea. Uh, everyone was able to use their idea. Um, and we were really uh, heavy on community content, which was good. Um, it wasn't like people scrapping for stories and a bunch of UGA content. Um, and yeah, today was like the first day that I felt like, I don't know, like I really, I can't pinpoint it down to one specific thing, but it was like I really saw our progress as like a team. And like today was the first day I kind of felt like, okay, we know what we're doing. Everything that we've been doing and everything that all of our efforts mm -hmm. are kind of like paying off and like, we're a lot more experienced now, and I think that definitely um, it was evident today in our work. Um, obviously, we all still have a long way to go, and we have a lot of learning to do, but... Um, Compared to Monday, what do you think we did better today to I avoid think, Monday? I think the Monday there scenario. was a lot more preparation that went into today on everyone's part. Um, I know a lot of people had um, stories that they have been working on. So I think that definitely helped. Um, also, I think the fact that it was a Wednesday as opposed to a Monday makes a difference. Yes, it's it always does, yeah. a lot harder coming in on a Monday with a story because you're not getting in contact with people and getting interviews on Saturdays and Sundays. But more you than could likely. get in contact on Oh, Thursdays yeah, you know, you definitely could, but it, yeah. you're not going to get an interview with someone in an office on a Sunday because they're they're at home, you know, so I think that it's just easier coming in on a Wednesday because yeah. you have Tuesday, yeah. um, which is a business day to have more time to prepare. Um, I think script approval went a lot smoother today than it ever has um, on everyone's part. I think that that was like something that we really focused on after Monday. It was like we all kind of made like a initiative mm -hmm. to be like this is what needs to get approved so we when we want to get our act together we do get our act together yeah yeah <laughs> so um, yeah yeah so I, de I think we improved on that a lot um and everyone just helping everybody i think that helps a lot too um like i said teamwork uh we're all willing to help each other out where it's needed and that makes a big difference so. 
Thank you guys, you did a great job, the three of you, leading us this week. And so we, we were in very good hands. You worked very well together, uh, very well prepared, um, pushing things, uh, helping each other out. I really, really appreciate everything you did. And uh, you're such a fast learner, Jazz, from the first day when you were you know, you didn't know exactly what producing was. It was tough on Monday. Uh, but today I was just impressed how quickly you learned and how smooth everything went. And you just, I, what I like, uh, like the most is how quickly you understood how to organize content in a rundown. You are very good at grouping the right kind of stories together. And, um, you know, I noticed that, that uh, Yes, I knew she was. I, I had to come up to her and say, don't do it for her. I want her to do it herself because she's going to gain the confidence that she can do it. So um, uh, I had to restrain Taylor. But I think today you did a lot of it yourself. Or maybe Taylor helped when I, was, I wasn't looking. I'm just like but incisive, so I just bounce everything off of Taylor's head. But that's good. So you guys are a team. Yeah. And, uh, whatever you did, all of the three of you, you organized the rundown very well. The stories were worked very well together. The whole thing was woven together very well. And again, thanks to Skylar for providing this amazing profile. And um, you know that helped us out and also made our, our show uh, very beautiful. We had, from, from start to finish, I think, that we had very, very strong content. Yeah. All the packages were like beautiful. Yes, yes. Uh, I can, oh, sorry. I can just see an improvement in shooting and audio and everything overall, um, and then our script writing too. I, we've definitely improved over the last couple weeks, um, and you don't see shaky video as much, so that's always good. Tripods are good. <laughs> yeah, it, there were a few shakes yeah. and bakes, you know, um, and and there was, uh, uh, you know, just a few jump cuts and uneven audio, but it's so much, it's just negligent now compared to where we were just a month ago. So I think our focus should again be on video and audio, having a tripod, uh, thinking about the, mm, there was a little overexposure in some of the, uh, the stand-ups and there was also um, uh, overmodulated uh, audio at certain points, but it was very negligible. So keep working and keep thinking about the video, especially the tight shots. Uh, Peyton, you're the queen of tight shots and, and stand-ups. <laughs> and I just wanted to ask you um, how you do it and what kind of advice you can give to people to, to do what you do. How do you plan? It's obvious that you give it some thought when you go, and, and, and it shows, because you come back with the right kind of B-roll. So what's the secret sauce? Write it on my grave when I die, please. Um, but that's That'll like be your nickname from now on. Wide medium. <laughs> But like seriously, if you just keep that in mind while you're shooting anything, it really helps. And two, it's knowing that people enjoy seeing tight shots better. You know, when we look at you know photos throughout history, um, like one of the first ones that comes to mind for me is the Afghan girl because it's a very it's a close up shot of her face and with her the striking eyes are just blue so eyes, stunning. Yeah, the National Geographic. Yeah. I'll never forget that. So you have to think about that with video too. People love up close and personal, and like they want to be in that people. room. And they love people. People mm -hmm. are interesting, yes. not open fields. You know. Yeah, and you know what? It is kind of embarrassing to be this close to someone with your phone or your camera, but just know that it's going to look so good later that they're really going to appreciate it and you know your audience will appreciate that too. Um, I will say for tighter shots on people's faces, I use my phone because it's less intimidating and doesn't look like it's going to swallow someone. Um, but yeah. That's and that demo you did with the, the app and Thank you. <laughs> that was yeah. very nice and I'm thinking that could be posted on social. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good clip for social I think you want to think about it, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, go ahead. One thing I did notice, and so at WAD, I have a 
uh, mentor who yelled at me for panning, don't pan in your sh in your in your packages. That's like a no no because it's, it looks sort of shaky on camera. Um, but just cut pans from your stories, and it'll look a lot better. Pan the pans, yes, yeah. pan the pans. Uh, again, I want to, sp you know, all our anchors, uh, including Bailey and the smart board, very nice, very natural. Um, y you had good chemistry, as I mentioned, together. Um, only thing I would just suggest, uh, change of tone and pace, otherwise excellent sports, uh, anchoring, weather. Um, and I just think you could have pointed to the screen and, and looked at some of the temperatures here and there. Uh, that was the only suggestion I could I could make. Otherwise, you were enjoying yourself. You did well ad living. I don't know why you didn't want to do it on Monday, but it was it was great. It was great. Just if you know when you're pointing to temperatures from time to time, you were sort of looking, but not turning enough to really convince us that you were actually showing us this temperature. So that's the only thing. Uh, with you, Katie, because you had to, you had such a long script, m maybe yeah. you could have just looked down or changed tone from time to time, but it was very well done, very well done, and interesting content even for me, and I don't know much about sports. You've been educating me. Uh, very nice, Bailey, very natural, added a lot with the smart screen. Uh, very pleasant. And Marissa, I hope we did well by you this time. I promised you it was, I mean, flawless. Your presentation, all live, was flawless. Uh, right tone. You smiled very nicely before Skyler's package. You introduced us to something that was, you know, inspiring and yet um, nice. Uh, it was very nice. So um, the package is also very strong content, um, all of you. Um, I took some notes, uh, Jada, very nice package on the pop-up clinic. Um, I liked, uh, I think it was Jada, the, the graphic for the um, telephone interview. It was a nice one. Somebody had a very nice one. Was it yours or was it? That was you, exactly, because you had the picture, yeah. and um, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, just be careful with the audio levels, all of you. Uh, and uh, Bailey, I said again, this very interesting story, and you did it even though you were engaged with Tegna. I want to commend uh, Bailey and Jada were very well prepared before shows, and came up with, especially Bailey was coming up with ideas two days ahead of time and asking where is the story template. I, you know, I want to discuss things and I think um, that really impressed me. You impressed me the most with your preparation and especially for today you did such an amazing segment. It wasn't just a package, you did an, a segment even though you had Tegna, which was very important to you and your future. And so I, I really appreciate that and I, I'm looking forward to a week where we really work on being prepared and talk to your contacts tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, arrange some stuff for Monday. It's very important. Don't wait until Sunday because it's too late and we don't want another hectic Monday. Uh, so um, very nice, uh, Peyton, I, I said, you know, Skylar, it, you know, it really, I, I don't know how many times I read your script because it went from being almost six minutes <laughs> to being two and a half and I kept pushing you and I, I've read your script maybe 10 times. I saw your package and still when I saw it today, I teared up. I mean, it's it. And I know that you have very original content because no one got the mother. You went all the way to Atlanta to talk to her and uh, started raining. You guys had to switch positions and getting this mother, you know, to respond to the emotional reaction of um, uh, the, the, the police officer was just amazing. Uh, and you didn't have that. But what you did write was you saw, you, you were very flexible, and what surprised you was that he, that he teared up and he started crying. And so that gave you an idea to go and seek out the mother whose child, you know, caused this amazing reaction, you know, very human, very natural, and 
that was very good thinking. That's the way you should approach a package. Don't always go, yes, you have to have a plan, but always be open to surprises because that is what makes your content special. You see something, you can always come back and say, I need one more day because this and this happened and I need to find this person. And um, so that was very impressive. And I can't wait for all of your profiles. And please get your scripts back to me so that I can approve them and you can edit them because you're running out of time. And I want everyone's script to be approved in time so that we run your packages, the profiles. You see how, how much it added to our show, right? To, to have a package which was well thought out, well prepared and, and you know, when somebody was able to take more time with it. So I think, you know, I, you've got one which is, yours is ready also. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got, you know, we've got yours, uh, we've got two more that, that can go and I'm thinking at least two per week. Uh, so we have, I, I left you a little text in Slack that save them on, save it, your profiles. Julia, yours is almost ready to go, right? Um, you just have to give me your final. Did we, did I approve it? I still had a few more things. Okay, do you, yes. Do you uh, want us to share it like on a YouTube link once it's finalized or just keep it on our desktop until? Keep it on your desktop. Okay. And drop your leads, tags, and scripts in the file okay, that yeah. Ashlyn created. Yeah. So like when Peyton comes to work on Monday, she has that file and she can see what she has to work with and she can look for new specs that particular day or what time she has to fill and how and I think that will be very helpful to the producer of the week to have an idea of what they have so that they can time the packages mm -hmm. in a more relevant newsy way. Yeah. Uh, Whoever's so. producing November 5th I think it is whatever week that is that's probably the best time to run political profiles if so just because that'll be voting time, it's blocked, and it'll be another year from now when it's political-ish. Yes, week. so we need to, to save yours because it's political. Okay. It's a very strong package also, uh, a political profile. And I, I think, yeah, we can save yours for. Uh, I want to address just one issue that uh, popped up today which really worried me, and that's about sourcing and framing. I want to remind you again to go to our digital guide and look at our ethics and sourcing and think of what you learned about framing. What is framing? What is framing? Anybody wants to remind us what framing is? Yes, and what does it do if, how is it manipulative? What can you do to, you know, what happens when you frame? If you do it, thank you for trying. Darling, you were the only <laughs> one who tried to answer my question, <laughs> and I trying. appreciate it. <laughs> it is what you choose to include and what you choose to exclude can change the meaning and the context. Uh, if you choose inflammatory stuff out of proportion uh, and you decide to prioritize that or to put an emphasis on that and focus only on that, you are changing the meaning. And even though all the facts check out, you are still manipulating public opinion. Sourcing is very important. Um, I have seen several instances this week where there was an assumption that something was right and there was no fact. It was just, but I kind of, you know, so and so, uh, that's my impression and I know that that's the case that's not enough um, or the source you're quoting who says something is illegal when it's not um, comes from a biased source the source an interest is always think about your source and what their bias is what what is their interest and once you figure that out you know what to be careful about be very careful about well, this person said that something is illegal, 
when you don't have proof under the law, it's not illegal. It might be restricted. It, so these are very, this is very serious, the sourcing. It has to be accurate uh, and also the framing. What you leave out from a package, what you choose to include changes the meaning and you can manipulate people. Again, everything checks out, the facts checked out, check out, but m taking out the other side of the story or focusing on the negative, the, s the scandalous, um, without having a reason to do so is, is just, uh, don't do it, don't do it. And, um, and especially the sourcing, I, I saw several instances in which uh, the sourcing was not justified, that there wasn't the sourcing or strong enough sourcing about things. So be very careful with that um, because it can, it can damage your reputations and I'm very strict with that uh, because I want to protect you from that. Because all we have as journalists are our reputations. And once this thing is on air there with your face, it's there forever. You can't get rid of it. And I don't want that to be a ghost which is constantly, you know, chasing after you like a shadow in your future careers. So that's why I'm going to be very strict about these things. But apart from that, I am truly, truly impressed with the progress you've made. You've done everything I've asked you to do. You improved your leads. I have not seen yesterday a meeting was held kind of lead. I always see this meeting came up with this amazing thing or controversial thing or whatever. Um, and I'm very, very proud of you. You're very fast learners. You just need a little bit of guidance and uh, like our producer and, and you do things, even though maybe I t Taylor was helping her when I wasn't watching, uh, but <laughs> I saw that. But uh, yes, I am very proud of all of you and we're almost out of time, but I wanted to hear from you guys. Um, anything we should work besides the video next week? So this is like more of a comment for whoever's anchoring next. Anybody who's anchoring next? Okay, well, Isaiah, we <laughs> <laughs> yay. On Monday, I was like more kind of laid back, but today I might have, I probably pushed a little bit too much, but I was kind of up there while they were like looking at the rundown and like the producing and like as the person who's gonna read it, I think you get a different perspective than like the producer does when you're putting stuff together. So I like sort of made some suggestions. So I think it's a good idea for the anchor to be really involved in that as well. That way you're not like left out or like there's something you don't know or if like you notice something's not gonna flow easily when you're saying it, it's good to point that out too. So really just like be involved with your leadership team, I would recommend. Yeah. Very good advice, very good advice. This is for I think Taylor Sports next, but anyone who's sports, um, somebody from the athletic administration actually gave um, news source access to any of their media, which is how I got that footage of the open practice. And I have the login saved up there. Um, and I can send it to in like Slack and everything. So we now have access to footage of games and highlights and stuff. So he said that we were able to use it. So yes, he said that. Yeah, he was like, we want all news outlets. And I was like, oh, news outlets. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a content producer next week, right? I'm, I'm digital. Or digital. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you're content, digital, and Isaiah is our anchor, and we have our producer Peyton, and uh, I expect out of the box shows next week. So I want you guys to <laughs> innovate. I, I really, really want to go for it next week and um, but you know be balanced and you know we're still doing serious news but I want you to be very creative and try new things and push the boundaries and make me very nervous <laughs> please sir yeah okay